Let me all tap real quick. I just want to make sure everything is fine. Yeah, I can hear myself clearly. Yada yada. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, it's me, Skaboopy. The one and only. Skaboopy. 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 Back at it again with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The sequel to, who would have guessed it? The Amazing Spider-Man. I've already covered the first game, so check that out if you haven't yet. Like you saw at the start of the video, you can go ahead and skip to where I cover the costumes and, you know, my thoughts on those. However, if you don't want to do that, just sit back and relax while I talk about the game as well in just a little bit. For now, I'll be putting up my thoughts and what goes on when I look at these costumes, what I generally feel. Uh, I may not be a seamstress or know lots of words, but goddammit, I know what looks cool, and I'm here to tell you that the costume selection in this game is pretty cool. As somebody who likes to wear the default costume for like a lot of the games, uh, in the first part when I started playing this game, I actually wore a few different costumes. Mostly because I didn't give a shit, but yeah, that's how cool we got it this time. So before we head into the section where I talk about the game, I want to quickly say thank you to anybody who showed up to the stream. Greatly appreciated for you guys to just endure my ramblings. Something is not okay with me, but I can't say without proper medical checkup. So again, thank you guys. Also, thank you to anybody who watches the stream after it's over and it just becomes like a VOD. You know who you are. I also have Twitch. Go check that out. Alright, let's move on to the next section. And hey. How about you also hit that subscribe button and the like? Alright, uh, I don't really know where to start. That's, that's a lie. Somehow, um, this game feels slower, less intuitive, and less fun than the first game. Which, mind you, I had a really decent time with the last game. Like, the combat is just blander somehow, and the stuff is annoying. How? It should have been easy to prove upon the first game's mechanics, but I didn't see anything innovated at all in this one. In fact, some of the cool animations when you're fighting from the first game are gone here. I haven't seen Spidey once suplex anyone at all in this game, and I think that's just a tragedy. Like sure, you got some cool Herokoranis here, but that's all you're gonna really get from this fucking combat. And the stuff felt like downgraded to not in not animation wise but like it, it feels like i can't do the things like i could in the last game like it feels like i can't like in this clip for example i can't take him down from the ceiling and i could have done that easily in the last game and nor was i able to do double takedowns too and you have to be really close to goddamn enemies to fucking pull them in to fucking take them down stealthily it's just, it's just weird. I enjoyed the stealth in the last game. I like stealth, but I, just, I, I did not want to participate at all in this one. Along with that, the story was even weirder. And I knew coming into this game, it was going to be strange. Like, Gwen is just not here. And no emotional moments. No backbreaking. No. She's literally mentioned once. Uh, Gwen, she still interns at Oscorp. At the office this late? No, but I should make sure. That's a good idea. I always thought you two never should have split up. Um, don't wait up for me. I always do. Oh, they mentioned Gwen. That's nice. And she was never brought up again. It's a shame too, because imagine if Gwen was a factor in this game. Maybe they could have recreated the clock tower fight or have it take place over at the bridge. I don't mean to get off topic, but you know, I really did enjoy Peter's depression and grieving in the movie. I really wish we could have seen more of the anger he mentioned in No Way Home about not holding back. We only get a snippet of it in the second movie, and it's one of my favorite scenes, showing his rage. It made me emotional. Sometimes I just, I stop pulling my punches. What the hell, man? I got rageful. I got bitter. Speaking of the movie, everything from the movie is literally thrown at you at the second half of this game. Like, once you're done looking at Kingpin's gooning files, suddenly you gotta go fight Electro, who got his ass fried off screen by the way, we didn't get to see that. Then we gotta fight this ugly ass Leprechaun, 
in which Spider-Man shows how really bitter he is by bashing Harry's face in multiple buildings. And then, we gotta go fight Carnage. Don't even get me started with Cletus Cuck Cassidy over here. <sighs> if there was anything I liked about the game, it was Craven. I enjoyed his performance. I really liked the unlockable costumes to get in this game. Kingpin was a decent idea to throw in here, I guess, and oh yeah, the swinging. I feel a lot of people were really praising the swinging in this game for some reason, and since I finally got the chance to try it out myself, yeah, I get it. It's not life changing, I thought it was gonna be, but I could totally see people at the time when this game came out how it could have made someone cream their pants thinking this was the fucking best shit ever. Overall, if the last game was a really decent 7 out of 10, this is a 6 out of 10 game. I would have gone for 5, but I'm a nice guy, but you don't want to see my freaky side. Alright, finally we're on to the costumes. I will quickly note that some of these costumes are brought back from the previous games, looking pretty similar without much change. So, if I do end up quickly talking through a costume, it's because I already went over it in the previous video, and I don't want to try to repeat myself a lot. With that quick sidebar out of the way, let's talk about the default costume. Who's the man in the picture? Huh? <laughs> I, I, I'm parodying! <laughs> Honestly dude, it felt like this costume was everywhere, and for good reason too. It generally rivaled the same Raimi design because this suit felt ripped from the comics. Also this baby dancing Spider-Man video is so popular, I don't know why, but it shows how popular this costume was. It's a very slim design too, mostly to fit the physique of this Spider-Man in which the logos have to be a little longer themselves but look great. And the bug eyes was always my favorite part of this costume too. I just love how big they are and stands out so much. Now compared to the game, you can see Peter is definitely more built around his upper body, towards his shoulders especially. Worth mentioning is that the costume is definitely more saturated. Like you don't really notice it, but if you look at it more closely like, oh oh yeah, there there is a color difference here. And now, and now that I'm comparing it from the movie to the game, it's like, oh I, I prefer the movie's color scheme more than this weird like blue and red hue that they amped up. That's the only thing I'm really iffy about this costume is the color. Everything is completely fine. I love the brick texture that's on the red and you know those bug eyes they kind of glow too which is pretty cool but like it's just the colors that are kind of off for me. Without delaying it any further I'm gonna leave this one at a 9. Almost there. It's almost perfect but not quite right. And this is the part where I would usually show like how a costume will look, you know, how it's battle damage, but it's kind of weak in this game. Like, it's not as cool as it was in the last game, which is uh, sorely disappointing. There is a costume that does look badass when it's battle damage, I'll let you know, but you're, you're really not missing out on much. It's fine, don't worry about it. When Dr. Octopus switches minds with Peter Parker in a devious act, he gains all his memories, his past, his trauma, and his drive to do good, promising to the dying Peter Parker that's wheezing in Doc Ock's body that he'll continue to do good, but in his own way, becoming a better Spider-Man, a superior Spider-Man. To say this costume is sick is an understatement because it looks fucking cool alright. No longer is he friendly but menacing. This is his second costume by the way and the one we see the most, if not all the time. But his first design is still pretty sick too. I definitely want to see that adapted or brought into a game someday. For now we got this look which I also believe is a redesign of the Alex Ross design. It's pretty much adapted well from the comics into the game. I like how there's some red by his heel, the black seeps into his chest from the front logo, the webbing gives off a certain messy feel that kind of reminds me of the Edge of Time suit. You can see there's more webbing along this guy but in a perfect amount, I feel. By the way, this guy's got some sharp fingers. I appreciate they did that too. He also has that in the comics. Talons that retract to cut. This guy does not mess around anymore. Also, his lenses are tinted yellow. Usually, it's just straight up black or sometimes white, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, tinting yellow in the game is not that bad of an idea either. Yellow tinted eyes probably wouldn't look good in a comic panel or anything, but in this game, it suits him. 
Maybe they thought that complete black lenses looked off or something? I don't know. Oh yeah, and he has those bracers that are used to control his spider tracers and exchange calls or something like that. Uh, I kind of like how it does separate his hands and his arms to really give him just more pizzazz. His back does protrude because he also has those spider legs. Of course, you can't do that in this game, but it's a cool nod. Man, I'm pretty sure I've said this a lot, but I feel like I give a lot of costumes a 10 or just a high rating in general, but they did good with this costume and it's a rewarding unlock. Which, by the way, you have to go for a gauntlet to get this costume, which was slightly annoying, but worth it. It's an easy 10 for me and I can't wait to see this costume brought back again in a future title. Pretty sure there's no need for introductions for Miles Morales here, but this is a costume that is brought from a previous Spider-Man game, Edging of Time, I, I mean Edge of Time. Like I said earlier, not gonna go into much detail about costumes that I already talked about, but it is nice seeing this costume return. If there's anything I should note is the physique of Spider-Man that I mentioned before does kind of change how a costume can look and feel. Like, Miles is typically a skinny kid, right? Maybe as he grows older, he'll be built, but as of right now, he's drawn and typically viewed slim and not so tall. But in this game, this guy is fucking jacked, like holy shit. My favorite example to pull from is currently, or whenever this happened, uh, Nightwing has to leave Bloodhaven, the city he patrols, because he's being framed for a murder. So fucking Batman decides to step in to become Nightwing for him. Holy shit Nightwing, uh, you uh, look a little different man. To summarize, it definitely can change the feeling of a costume, uh, for me at least. You can't help it though with the model they've made in games. I, I get it, and I'm a big fan of this costume too. I feel a lot of people really do vibe with the black and red scheme going on here. With the red webbing on the black is my favorite aspect of this costume. I'm having a hard time deciding whether to put this costume at a 10 or a 9, mostly because I myself would prefer to wear this suit as a slimmer, shorter Spider-Man, but if you like to wear this costume as this built dude, then I, I totally understand. I'm just gonna leave this at a 9 for me, but it, it, is, it is a 10 if you want it to be, and I won't argue with you. Oh wow, real cool game. Thanks. Really appreciate you ruining my shot, testing my fucking patience. Oh jeez, this is gonna be another quick look again. You should be expecting that. But uh, again, this costume is really great. Returning from the first game to this one. They kept it the same lime green instead of it just being green. But by the way, is it lime green? I'm getting like different answers here on Google Images. Maybe they added some more stretching, but it's a really cool look overall. The green stands out much more than the red. It's an easy pick if you had to pick a costume from the last game. And honestly, ever since Edge of Time, we see this costume brought over into every main entry of Spider-Man games, so far at least. Although in Edge of Time, it was red, which is a little fun fact you can tell your friends or to bring up in conversation when you're trying to woo somebody. So in the Spider-Man game at the time, the big time costume was red, which didn't really stand out all that much in the levels, but in the rest of the Spider-Man game series, it's green, which in my opinion looks far better than red. I was really gonna leave this costume at an eight uh, because the costume variety in this game is way more better than the last one. But uh, just looking at this guy again, I, I, I can't deny how cool he looks. Plus like the muscles, like look at his abs, bro. Just, dude, this guy's sick. So I'm gonna leave him at a 9. Not a 10, but definitely, he's definitely there. Another returning costume. Uh, I do not notice a single change in this guy from the last game to this game. Kane is looking as edgy as ever, and I would have loved this costume as the grumpy, edgy, little emo kid I was back then. To quickly put my thoughts out there, I am not the hugest fan of it entirely being red down there with nothing going on. However, it's accentuated by this guy's pure muscles, making this guy intimidating as hell. I also like how they made his lenses like this just weird mixture of two colors that and I, I don't know the right word for these two colors that are mixing, that are mixing together, but it, it looks really nice. 
But that's about it for this guy. It would have been another A, but finding the physical side on this guy really helped boost the look of this costume a lot. I definitely overlooked it in the last game, and that's my fault entirely. Cause look at this guy. You can see his ribs showing. Super cool. So he's gonna be at a 9. Again, I'm saving those 10s for when I feel like it really deserves it. Like when my gut is telling me, yeah, yeah, it definitely, it definitely deserves to be a 10. I am really a big fan of this design that's brought over from Shadow Dimensions because it makes 2099 Spidey look so cool. He looks shredded but not to the extent of like maybe Scarlet Spider-Man from before who needs it and they kept the glowing effect that travels like throughout his body too which is super neat. I went on about this costume in my Shadow Dimensions video so I don't need to say much at all about this look. Again, it's my favorite design for this guy. So it's obviously gonna stick to being a 10. I can't deny it. I'm still unsure how I feel about the spider on his back, but eh, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever on it. It's kind of cool. And hey, look, they even mentioned unstable molecules in the description for this guy that I brought up in my Shattered Dimensions video. Pretty neat. From the Shadows Dimensions and Edge of Time, I maybe I forgot, we got Flipside, a weird android robot Spider-Man copy. It's a very strange look to be said, and honestly it's kinda whatever. I like how the webbing is kinda indented into the sky, and he has these lenses that are designed differently to look kinda evil looking. That's all I like about him. I'm not feeling this guy personally. Especially this time around, because they removed the cool glowing effect that travels through his body. It made his webbing glow too, but it's on 2099 in this game still, but not on this guy. Which is funny. They really said, go fuck yourself. One thing I kinda messed up is that his front logo has these evil looking eyes, which I find pretty cool. But in the game so far, it's kinda missing, but it's not. It's there. You can see it, right? Tell me I'm not the only one who thought it was gone. It's just less pronounced, much thinner, but it, but it's there, and now that I've seen it, um, can't not really notice it anymore. It still doesn't help that it's just a big black spider in the front, but I also never realized it's facing down, you know, because it's flipped upside down, because because the front logo on Spidey is usually facing up, but but on this guy, it's it's down. Get it? It's. It's flipped upside down. Just gonna throw him at a 6. My opinion still hasn't changed since, even though I recognize something new. It's kinda just a bizarre kind of look that I don't find myself all that into. I definitely glazed all over this costume in my Edging of Time video. For good reason too, because it's still a sick looking costume. I love his design in this game too, with the cool carbon and fiber mesh that's in different parts of his body. But there's definitely something I immediately caught looking at this guy, and it's that instead of this like black mate glossy look from Edge of Time, it's this lighter tone, kind of bluish grayish. It's definitely a downgrade from the sleek black. The yellow doesn't or barely glows at all. Still, the overall design is there, it's kept, and I could definitely find myself wearing it just for a little, but eh, it's gonna drop to a 7 for me. Jeez, I do feel bad that it dropped from a 10 to a 7, but that's my gut feeling. It's a neat. Okay, this is one of those goofy costumes, right? Spider-Man wore this costume when he was being framed for a murder he didn't commit. So instead of coming up with, say, one persona, he had four. Prodigy, Dusk, Ricochet, and Hornet. 
The costumes were all designed, I think all of them, were designed by Mary Jane. And the wings on his back allow him to fly, thanks to his friend, the Prowler, Hobie Brown. Wait a minute, it's a very bizarre design, but it's not uncommon to have these like weird looking far out designs since this was during the 90s. If this was a younger me, I would have definitely not given this costume a chance and give it a low rating, but I was a dumbass who didn't know any better. I find this costume pretty endearing. It's kind of like a Power Rangers, Sentai, Kamen Rider-esque look to it. He's kind of bulky too with those big ass blue shoulder pads and gauntlets. Uh, I like how his neck is this metal frame and I do like his helmet a lot with the visor. His mouth moves with the dialogue. I, I expected it to like stay static, but no. The color scheme of this guy too, I dig. Pink, blue, and darkish green blue I, I wish i knew my color theory but yeah this guy's awesome and i totally would have written him off as like a bad costume when i was younger but i found myself opening up a little more and you find costumes that you thought looked bad actually look cool in their own way except for you secret wars spider-man the only thing going for you is the orangish red webbing and that's it you can't compare to the hornet or the Gotastic Bagman over here, so get the fuck out. If I had to put this guy somewhere, he's definitely not a 10, but I'm gonna give this guy a 7. He's really neat. I like him. Alrighty, you remember those four personas I mentioned? Well, this guy, as you would recall, is Ricochet, and he's a tie between my favorite of the four, the other favorite being Dusk, which, by the way, sorta of concludes all of the personas being featured in a Spider-Man game. What's really left for this costume is to be in a single game, all four costumes. That would be really cool. Ricochet was one of the only costumes I look forward to wearing and playing around with from what I saw this game when I was younger. You can obviously tell that I'm a big fan of the jacket, which has the gold discs that are adorned across his arms, that he uses to throw and bounce along walls. The colors on this guy, I don't mind at all. If this is your first time looking at him, you think, oh, these are just his normal colors from the comics. But it's typically shown to be this highlighted blue on black, or maybe it's actually just a type of dark blue on him. The shade of blue changes, it's kind of weird, but I think they had the right idea of going with a gray tone instead. The jacket being a little darker too. i definitely like to see this costume make a return with maybe like the blue instead. It would still look cool in my opinion. If anything, I wish the aura on his chest was more prominent, but this costume is, is awesome. I'm gonna give it an easy 9. That's just how I'm feeling for this guy. I guess it does make sense this costume is back considering Carnage is in this game. If you're wondering, yeah, we've seen this guy in Web of Shadows, the Wii version. I'd highly advise you to check that video out if you haven't, very interesting stuff. Now I didn't mind the costume one bit in Web of Shadows, it was wicked, especially doing symbiote attacks, it was truly awesome. However, there's no symbiote stuff to pull off here and I will admit, he looks more goofy in this one. In the Wii, it was acceptable, with the visuals of the game lending to the suit. In this one, it doesn't entirely land as cool as it is. Honestly, in the comics, he's drawn very well and looks sick as hell, but when it's translated to this game with their rendition, he comes off goofy. It's really the open mouth that does it for me, with the poopy exterior. I wondered, couldn't they just have kept it closed and have him had a wide grin? That sounds cooler in my head than this guy's open mouth. Like, come on, dude, you're breathing hard as fuck into the mic. And I was having an entire meltdown because this doesn't look entirely like the Ben Riley costume. And I was thinking, oh, maybe they were referencing the cartoon instead, but I don't know. Like, I, I think I'm probably cracked. Like, uh, maybe this video is a little too long. I'm, I'm, I'm getting woozy over here. I've said what I said about this costume, and it doesn't hit me the right way as it did in Web of Shadows. Though, it, it did act more like a symbiote suit in that game. Either way, I'm just gonna leave this one at a, at a 5 for me. I can totally see somebody looking at this costume thinking it's badass, but it, nah, not for me. 
before we move on, the rest of the costumes here are in DLC. It's really awesome that I managed to even get it and it showed on stream. The unfortunate thing is that they're all costumes I've already covered in previous videos, pretty much were used from the games before. Like I mentioned, I really don't want to say everything I said all over again. That'd be kind of annoying. So this is going to be a lightning round. I'm going to say my piece about these costumes and quickly for a number rating on screen. No, I did not get lazy. Sorta. Of. There is one costume that I will go in depth on, but let's go through these first. The Iron Spider Suit. Can you believe this shit is in Fortnite? A Tony Stark crafted suit for Spider-Man that he ditched during and after the events of Civil War because Tony was spying, tracking, and even figured out his spider sensibilities to combat Peter. What a dick. Anyways, it is a sick looking costume in the comics, but what is missing in this game is the metallic look. There was a cool pattern that's pretty faint in the red, but this suit does look bland, I will admit. It doesn't bring out the full potential it could be. Captain Fortnite is way cooler and it's a redesign. W w what the hell? So sadly, this suit is gonna go out of 6 for me. Cosmic Spider-Man. I have a big appreciation for this costume and they really did nothing wrong. You can even see there's some sheen and gloss on this guy while the blue doesn't with some faint white on it to represent stars. I always loved this guy's red webbing mouth guard thing and his intimidating eyes. It was always a very neat costume to me and stood a 7 because I understood people might not gel with the suit like I do. But I find this rendition of Cosmic Spider-Man pretty dang cool so he's gonna go up to an 8 for this game. Too bad he's fucking dead. The black suit. This version of the black suit seems pretty similar to the Edge of Time version. It's pretty much carried over, just look at those eyes. What's missing from the previous game is that blue gleam that was on this suit, which is sadly not in this game. However, he still looks cool with just this black, with the lighting from the game helping the suit. It's an easy 10 for me, you can literally never go wrong with the look of the symbiote suit. Oh, oh my god. Pete, 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 oh my, Pete, what the fuck? Spider-Man Noir. Okay, this one's just literally ripped from Shadow Dimensions, and I'm really glad it was, because you can barely look at the suit during the game when it gets dark in that game. So it's really awesome we get to see it in the bright open environment to swing around in. I like the Shadow Dimensions design, Lo love the turtleneck, black leather gloves, the belt hanging off of there. Another easy 10. And the electric proof suit. This costume was always fine by me. I like the red padded sections across this costume and the big wide lenses. Also the unique logo too. There's also some white strips along his back which I like. Although I don't really like how there are white specks on his head. It just bugs me. It's like there's a dollop of pigeon shit on top of his head. So if you can ignore that part of the costume, it's a 7. Finally, the last of the DLC costume, the ends of the Earth suit was built to fight the Sinister Six, equipped to fight each member and he wore this when shit was fucking going down, and Doc Ock was being a little too silly. I feel this was the start of the trend for Battle Armored Spider-Man. Like, there was Mark 1 and the Bulletproof suit, but this costume was really like, I I'm a common writer now. And he looks cool, okay? He's prepped for a big fight ahead of him. Padded from his legs to his forearms, some nice cloths on the red. I gotta mention the helmet for this guy too. So sleek, his eyes pointing along with the shape of his helmet, with the lenses are slightly glowing too. I also like the lines going along his helmet, and the cool indents in the black of his costume. Couple things to note is that there's this choice of blue, which I like, but it's only apparent on some parts of the suit. While well, most of his upper body and up is just black when I feel they could have just gone with black and red. Overall though, it's cool armor for Spidey. I feel some people definitely gravitate towards these battle armor designs for good reason because you can't deny that they look cool. Even if the designs are a little overkill, like what, was this costume really warranted or necessary? So gonna give this guy a nice easy 8. All right, and that's it for this game. Modern fucker. This guy does call it his first costume, and I've always seen it as a costume as well, personally. But I, I don't know, man. The only thing you're really focusing on is his mask and sunglasses, with the beanie as the cherry on top. What more is there to say, huh? 
But if there's anything I can say about this costume that will help its rating is that it's a chill costume. Literally, that's the only thing helping it. It's not some crazy armor or whatever the fuck is going on there. It's just a chill, low-key, I don't give a fuck costume vibe that I kinda get. Somehow. So without really arguing it, it's just a 10. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a 5. Oh, put it on because why not? And that's how it gets you. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. That felt like forever writing and editing, but honestly, I really, really like how this video came uh, came out. And thankfully, most of these costumes are reused, so I didn't have to go into too much detail. But it'd be really cool to show your support if you like and subscribe. I can say that because this is the end of the video and I have immunity. It would also be pretty freaking sweet if you follow me on Twitch. I want to try to stream more, so if you ever see me go live, pop in and say hello. I'm Skaboopy, the one and only Skaboopy. I'll see you guys around. <laughs>